Hello folks, welcome back to the channel, Farmer Envoy Extreme here. Get rid of looking at all the new mods that dropped on the 2nd of September 2024. And yes, this is coming out a couple of days later than planned. A lot of reasons for that, but before I explain that, if you're new to this kind of what I'm doing, this is mod reviews, and as always, time starts will be down below. So if there's a individual mod you want to look at, because there is a few doozy ones, including some herbal tea, that could get you five million dollars a year, but we'll get into that in its own section. But yeah, so the reason why it's been a bit of a delay, had all the set up on Monday, went into Tuesday night and that, and then yeah, that's a couple of days, just been a bit hectic and that, with bike trouble and that, so I'll be fixing my bike and that for work and that. Hence why this is coming out, what, on Thursday? So yeah, without further ado, Let's get into our new mods. So for our first mods, we're looking at the Waterwell Display in Modding, 0.27 megabytes to download, and yeah, this provides some fresh spring water for you and your farming at, and yeah, essentially there's not much else to it. It's a simple water source, but I do love the detail of it, like the little water nozzles and that, just how it's been well constructed together. Especially, it's not just a pipe and that, it's like it's got like foundation and that. That says water and that. But yeah, so we'll hop into our tractor here. And yeah, we'll see how fast this fills up, because obviously with some water sources now, there's some water mods and that, the source can be a bit, you know, low output and that. So let's go and fill up now. And yeah, that is filling up rather quickly. This is a large trailer we're using now, a large tanker. That holds 50,000 liters. And within what, just a couple of seconds of that, that or a few seconds, 10,000 liters or so, that is a decent amount of water you're going to be getting. I think that is as fast as you're really going to get with kind of any water source in that, so let's move the tank right away. But yeah, so only, what, a thousand to buy, and you can find this under tools and that, so go to your tools, go towards the end. As mentioned, it is 1,000 to buy. Stock count is 2, goes down to 1. No kind of like card changes options or anything like that, which you wouldn't expect anyways. But anyways, that is the Waterwell by Ian Modin. Next. Moving along, we got the small farmhouse. This is by Batanoa Lucas. It is 16.55 megabytes to download. 35 grand to purchase. A daily upkeep of 12 bucks. Slot count is 18 and 19 respectively. So 18 slots for the plaster wall and 19 for the brick and mortar textures and that so technically this is the back of it because yeah I did place this down wrong by accident but anywho so yeah you got your seat trigger just here I go to the right hand side of the building by this bench this is going to be your wardrobe so you can change your outfit and that but anyway so you'll find this under buildings under farmhouses go towards so yeah 18 slots for the plastered one, and then 19 slots for the brick and mortar. Both of them go down to one. And yeah, as mentioned, it is 35 grand to purchase, and it's a very simple building. Can't enter, unfortunately, but it provides the job it's needed. I like the texture and the details and that of like the brick and mortar and that. But yeah, it's sort of well done. I think it's more of a what like an Eastern European vibe and that. It's it's kind of. It's the kind of house where you'll see it mainly in yeah, Eastern Europe, like Poland and that, and in some other aspects of Eastern Europe. So yeah, that is the small house by Batinois Lucas. Next. Now to look at Robert's Garage, or Garage, depends on how you pronounce it. This is by Dejfeed. It is 10, 9.92 megabits download. Slot cam is 36, goes down to 1. And yeah, simple, it's a garage and that. Also, I have to help me open up, but yeah, so trigger to open and close the gate. And yeah, a little workshop garage and that. Can't find a trigger for it, so there ain't like a workshop in essence where you take your vehicle in and repair it. But there is plenty of mods out there that can let you have an aspect of like a workshop garage or garage in it. Things like the toolbox by Schultz Modding. That is one I highly recommend, and I think I do have it installed in that. So yeah, Toolbox by Schultz Mod in that. So yeah, what you can do is place it anywhere. 
However, if you're going to place this down, do remember where you place it is where it's going to load in when you save and leave the game and reload the game. So, something like this, I recommend just like find somewhere to place it, you know, in the corner of the shed and that. There you go. So, yeah, got your workshop trigger and that. But, yeah, so, so I'm trying to find a little detail now for to mention that. Overall, nice and good. I like switch just over here, so that is for the wall over here. There's no lights for the walls and that, or the ceiling that. You'll find this under sheds. So yeah, we'll go to our sheds and go along Robert's garage. And yeah, there's no colour changes or anything. And yeah, so if you place it down, you do get this grass texture on the ground. But of course, if you do want this grass texture, you can just free place it by pressing triangle on that on the PlayStation controller. But overall, I do like the detail of it. Like again, you know, 10, oh, sorry, 10 megabytes in that, 36 slots. May seem a bit much for just a shed in that. But you get all these like, little details, like the rubble in that, you know, old buckets in that. Wheelbarrow, yeah, at the end of the day, it's like aesthetic piece in that. But overall, good quality work's done. And yeah, so you got some items that you can lift and chuck about as always. But yeah, this is a nice little garage in that. But anyways, that is Robert's Garage by Dejvid. Next. Now for the wholesale sell point. This is by NS Factory Mods. It is 5.79 megabytes to download. Slot count is 9 goes down to 1. Cost of purchasing this sell point is 90 grand. And yeah, it says in the description all products from the basic game can be sold at this wholesaler. And says regardless of whether or not you use grain, dairy and all that other stuff now or artisan goods. The expansion allows you to sell your agricultural products efficiently and profitably at the market. And profitability on the market as well. So yeah, that's a little description on that. And you find this under productions and sell points. But yeah, it's not just, you know, the basic items. It can sell, it can sell pretty much a lot of items now, like, including modded items and that so yeah 90 grand to purchase no custom textures and that or anything like that so yeah we're just going to demonstrate this by sending some fertilizer but yeah when i say about excel anything i literally do mean anything so you've got your hazard mark area over here where it's the offload point has its own little grill area as well so yeah, sell your fertilizer and that. But also, if you go around to the back, there is a log cell point area. So, again, got your hazard mark area over here and that. And yeah, it seems to be missing the outer areas of it, but... I'm guessing like, the outer area is going to be somewhere here, but as long as you sell closer here, this is going to be your wood cell point. But if we go into our prices and that... I can see we've got wholesale, except you know the platinum stuff and premium items. As well, the herbal stuff and that, that's a sell point for it as well. And literally, all the items I've got on here because, yeah, I've got your premium and platinum DLC enabled. And even some of the modded stuff by AIM Gym. That. So, this is Nomad Sand by AIM Gym. Currently, this is my modded test map and i'm going to be doing a new test map soon but yeah the only items it cannot accept is the mushrooms flowers not an issue now sell the mushrooms and that or oh, sorry flowers but yeah for some reason it can't sell the mushrooms not sure why but pretty much anything that is a fill type is sellable so this includes tmr you know why would you sell tmr it's rubbish at selling and yeah you can't make money selling tmr in that person in that but things like, yeah, your digestate, surrey and that, can't sell that there. Lime, so yeah, if it's, as long as it's not really a liquid, you can pretty much sell anything in that, so... That I do like, even like your production items and that. Because we see... Okay, we can't sell the honey in that, that's one thing I forgot to look at. But yeah, besides from the honey, diesel and that, yep, yeah, sell your diesel. And yeah, pretty much mainly... <laughs> Almost every item, like 95% of items, 99% of FS32 items, you can sell as one sell point. And yeah, there's no, you know, crazy sell prices or anything like that, or crazy X values in the XML files and that. But yeah, day, it's a simple good sell point. Got lights and that, that turns on at night. 
but yeah, just overall, I do like the look of it. You know, the textures and that. Well designed, well builded and that. Yeah, you know, you've got your carton rolls over here for your paper and that. You've got your bolt fill tanks and that. Again, little aspects, little details and that I do appreciate. Along with your waste bins and recycling bins. But anyway, so that is the wholesale by Ellis Factory mods. Next. Now for the fluid tank. This is by Solus Modding. 1.43 megabytes to download. Two slots each for each individual item. And yep, yeah, so the fluid tank is a mod that contains five tanks that has fill points for one specific item each. So that is diesel. Actually, yeah, if I show you, because it for some reason I'm not getting the pop up here. Not. Oh, yeah, there we go. So yeah, got your water tank, diesel tank, herbicide tank, along with milk and liquid fertilizer. So pretty much your five basic items that you'll need on your farm at any point on, yeah, pretty much any point in FS22 and that. It does come with a bit of a steep price in that, so this is 12,500 and only holds 52,710 litres. Why that are the Pacific, I do not know, but it is what it is. But anyway, so you'll find this under containers. And yeah, so 12 and a half hours each. As mentioned, slot count is 2 and goes down to 1. Also, there is no colour options or anything like that, so we will love to have a colour option, but at the end of the day, it is what it is, Nat. And yeah, it looks like pretty much a tanker net that you'll fit onto a lorry net to transport items in that. But yeah, you've got five of these, five individual ones. And yeah, you can, you know, just place a bunch more down if you wish. If you place it down normally, you do get this grey asphalt texture. So just a little note to point out. So if we hop into our case here. So go to our second tank in this row, and this is going to be our diesel, so there we go. Trigger is just there, so, because yeah, the empty area for the Bowser we got here is specifically here. And yeah, so it's literally bang on the mark, and yeah, we are filled to the brim. And yeah, to export your item, so... Oddly how I had set up, so yeah, that's quite too close together. Like, if you look at these triggers over here, literally this is a fine line between the triggers and that. So, personally, if you lay it out across like I've done here for this first row, it is perfectly fine. But once you get into, you know, going across from each other and having, you know, not collisions, but very close to the fill point triggers and that, it does get a bit iffy now, so that's again a little issue I've noticed when setting it up. But in the day, that's just how I had it all set up now. So, if you go across, get to the end of the Bowser, and there we go. See, so yeah, actually, if I turn on the help menu, and yeah, so we go closer, the output is a larger trigger error in that, I think. Especially compared to the where you put items in and that. But you can see we're filled up with milk. It's not the fastest fill up, like it's 1 1000, 2 1000, 3 1000, 4, 5, about 6 seconds per 4000 litres of items, so it is literally not the fastest of fill types and that. By the end of the day, it's a lovely item that, so nice little bit of detail in that. I do like the sort of weathering effect, I like the dirt in that, you know, on top of it. That's all right, glossiness as well to it, the shine. So yeah, overall, it's a quality mod in that. So this is the fluid tank by Sodas Modding. Next. Now for the lizard medium size pack. This is by DH Modding. It is 29.6 megabytes to download. Slot counts for this mod pack is 13 slots for the smaller 5 millimeter capacity silos and 14 slots for the 10 milliliter silos and first of all you may think oh what's the difference between four and that to four and that so basically you get two five million and two ten milliliter capacity silos the difference between the two so we got the I think the five mil ones here and that so the difference is literally the foundation area over here so 
you can see we got the concrete textures and that, so we got those. And if we go just across to our second silo over here, rather than have a concrete wall, you got your brick and mortar. So it's a bit weird to be honest. I think yeah, I do love brick and mortar, but for a silo like this, especially how it all looks, you know, all the stainless steel and that, all the metal piping, all the little gizmos and that. I think personally I do like the concrete better than that. But seeing that the concrete is a little bit dirty and that, so at the end of the day, what you what what will you go with is down to your own personal preference. Anyway, so go into your buildings under silo, so you can see it's 300,000 years for the 5 millimeter capacity one. And for your 10 million years it is 450,000. Maintenance for either of these is 50 bucks a day, 50 euros. And it is a multi-fruit fill type size, so literally anything you can fit in here. So our 10 million one, this is not 5 mil, correction there. So yeah, we've got straw seeds and all that, lovely good stuff. Now if you go over here, ignore that, that's be forget to remove it, so... In this slide we got straw, grapes, wood chips, seeds, snow and iron ore. That's filled up to 5 milliliters. And we got 10 milliliters of, what's that, TMR and that I think, or forage. And if we go across here to one of our 10 milliliter silos. I think this one is empty, right? Ah, close enough. It'll fit most items in here, so there we go. Empty our TMR. And you see on the bottom right, it is going up very quickly in that. That's because of the dis amount you can displace with this particular trailer I'm using. But as you can see, it is filling up all good. I've go into drone mode, building mode and that. Have a bit of a closer look at it. When you do free place it, or well, sorry, not free place, when you place it down normally, you do get the dirt texture, so that is a thing to note as well. But I think that is done, empty in. Close enough. So, yeah, to fill up, so yeah, that's where you put your items in. To get your items out, you have to go around to the back or to the front, depending on how you want to look at it. And thankfully I do have the icons on, but it's very clear on where you take your items out, so just over here and that. And have the help menu open up, and there we go, filling up. Of course it's filling up the TMR because it's still got over 5% in the trailer left, so if you've got an empty trailer or less than 5% in the trailer, you can select any item in that. You'll get a menu that will pop up saying what item you want to take out. But overall, it is a cracking side of packing that. So, yeah, slot counts, as mentioned, is 13 and 14 slots, respectively, for the sizes. Very low upkeep. Okay, I admit the downput for the price is 300,000, 400,000, or sorry, 450,000. By the end of the day, you get what you pay for that, and that's a realistic pricing. If you want something a bit semi realistic, you know, but have a multi fruit function, then this is the side pack for you. But anyways, that is the Lizard Medium Silos Pack by DH Modding. Next. Now for the Small Farm Silo, this is by Joga Dim. It's 4.14 MB download. It is a 150,000 year silo that costs 20,000. Slot count, 8 slots goes down to 1. And yeah, this ain't a multi-fruit fill point silo and that, so that's something to note. So yeah, if we have a look here, we've got Wheat, Barley, Oats, Corn, sunflower, and soybeans, and that is pretty much it what you can fill up with. So yeah, just a thing to note about that as well, it's, yeah, it's quite limited on what you can fill up and how much you can fill up, but at the end of the day, it's 150,000 year silo, so, and for 20 grand, you know, for a starting farming that, that is more than adequate enough for you, especially in terms with, you know, 150,000 years, and you have to crop types variety that on the new farm and that so for a sort of farm this is absolutely beautiful and that and again it says in the mod description it's suitable for people who are starting their journey into agriculture and that and yeah that sort of does the job pretty much and that so 
you can find this under buildings, under silos. Uh, go along here, 20,000 to purchase, get your bollards and that. Lovely good stuff. So yeah, if you free place it in places like that. However, if you place it normally in that, you get this, you know, again, asphalt texture in that. So again, just a thing to note. But anyway, so let's take some items out. So once again, we're in our case with a new trailer in that. Go under the pipe in that. So under that pipe there, you can see. And yeah, select any crop you want. So let's say wheat. And then to fill up, so you drive along. As long as you get into the area in that, lovely jubbly. And boom. There you go. So, at the end of the day, not much else to say about it in that. It's a simple side though. Do love the metal work in that, like the side in that. It is good. It's got its base plate foundation in that. All that lovely good stuff. Bars for protection of the side itself, so you don't go accidentally. Hitting it with your tractor or trailer net. That uh, does help with so things not getting stuck in that because without this bollards and that, you can get stuck quite easy inside of that. So I do love that. But anyway, so that is the small farm silo by Juga Dim. Next. Now for something a little bit different. We got the Dihut Herbal Tea. This is by Shebben. 28.91 megabytes to download and this is a awesome little production that and for doing some, some little bit of testing I've done now I'll set this up because this does take a while to potentially fully alt optimize but actually I've got the optimization route down to about three or four months that I'll explain in a bit now but first of all let's just go a general overview of what this mod includes so you get productions you got greenhouses and that you got your cell point and that so Got your cell point over here. Also, you do have some statues in that. Some little signs of the statue in that. That's a little bit of a decorative piece in that. I do like in that. But anyway, so first of all, we'll go to our cell point. So, productions and cell points. I've go across. I um, should find the, the hood cell point. So, yeah, this is the market store in that. And the cell point for that, it is. Falling slots on console goes down to 1. Costs 5,000 to buy, so not too bad. If you don't want to use this and that, you can get away with not using it because the prices between the cell points, like the cell point and cell point by Schultz Mod in the cell every container, the price is about a 2.7% variation differences between them of. I think I got the price down to about £120 for a thousand litres difference here and there. But of course that's fluctuation in sell prices and that, so really you don't really need sell points. But if you want sell points, then you have it. Moving along, we got your greenhouses, so this is absolutely crucial because you need this to get your items. So this will get your tea leaves and that from the large garden, along with the greenhouse as well. There is a stark difference in prices, so your large greenhouse is 3 grand and slot count for that is 8 slots goes down to 1. What I will recommend, and I'll explain this how you can make 5 million a year from this production that, so that I'll explain in a bit, but personally I'll use these large gardens. Yes, it does have a large footprint of about over two greenhouses so you can get two greenhouses inside of one garden but still for the price of that five and a half grand i highly recommend the large garden on top of this you'll need an orchard and that so this is to get your linden or your dog roast so yeah you've got your dog roast over here that slot count for that is four slots goes down to one and your tree free linden is five slots goes down to one five grand each and yeah this is worth it moving on to your decorative items so if we go across so yeah we've got your warning sign 300 slot count for that is three goes down to one and your statue is two slots goes down to one costs one and a half grand again you don't need those two items but if you want them then they are here but yeah 
Time to move on to your production, so with this pack you get quite a bit of options, so this includes how you dry it and how you process your items and that. So if we go to our productions and factories and that, and if we just go across, so starting off with you got your herbal tea factory. 350 grand to buy, it is a bit steep, and this processes all your raw materials and it processes it. Again, if I go into our productions and that, so, so yeah, once you get your dried items or your mint and thyme and that, your peppermints, lemon bombs and that, but yeah, the items I don't need dry in, because yeah, you do need to dry some of them, but not all of them. These can be processed at the tea laboratory, which will require like your dry mint and thyme. Or you can just use the factory. And personally, I do recommend the tea factory. It is a lot more expensive. So yeah, let's go back into your productions and that. So the tea factory and that, 350 grand is a steep price, but once I go into how you can make 5 million a year from this, technically two of these, but trust me, it is worth it. Moving along, before you process most of your items, they need to be dried and that, so you got two options, so you got your old dryer here, 15 grand, and stock count for that is 19 goes down to 1. Then you also got your modern dryer, again, these two, and actually yeah, that uses the carpentry in that asset. That uses a shed asset, that's a shed asset, that is the great production asset. Helicopter interruptions aside, so yeah, that uses the grape juice asset and that with its own logo and that. And yeah, this does seem a bit of a complicated um, recipe in that, and again, I'll break it all down in a bit. So yeah, got your modern dryer in that, and then yeah, you got your herbal tea laboratory. This is the cheaper option compared to using the factory. You can get about three of these in, three, almost four of these in for the price of the factory. But if you want just sheer volume age, which is going to be key into making five million a year, I do recommend having two of these herbal tea factories down for full optimization from the dryers because there is a bottleneck in this production that that is the dryers and that. But yeah, so overall, just before we get into you know all that, how you make five million a year, let's just have a look. So you got your large garden there, and this does require water, and I think we have a look. So yeah, your orchards that they only require water. Your large garden does require the straw. But yeah, compared to the greenhouses, you're thinking the difference is really not a lot. So for example, mint, it's a technically two items to four or one to two ratio. One liter of water and straw gets you four liters of mint. Compared to that to the greenhouses, you do get more bang for your buck. Uh, yeah, it does require straw, so from the early stage, the greenhouses, they do seem to make more sense. At the end of the day, it's down to what you got on the farm. If you can spare the straw on that, then by all means, feel free to use it. Because if you look at the recipes in that, it is 768 litres a month you need in straw. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, so that is what? About 4,000 litres? Yeah, 4,200 or so litres a month. I think you can afford that, especially having like five of these you're going to need, or four or five of these to fully optimise the dryers and that. But again, I'll go into that in a bit. And then from there, moving down. So you've got our dog roses and that. And yeah, so you've got your herbal tea factory and that. So in terms of what it requires, it requires your dried items in, but to dry them. So for example, your old dryer and that. It is a very same recipe that for all the items. You get more for your modern dryer. For example, if we look at dried mint, 200 in, 150 out, 72 cycles a month. This one, it is double the cycles per month. So you get pretty much for all these, you get twice the amount for one dryer. So one modern dryer equivalents to two old dryers. And yeah, if you look at the prices of them all. So again, technically, even at this early stage, you know, 30 grand, that can do one of those so yeah again what i'm saying is so you know use like the modern dryer and that you can't get away with these and that again it's down to the aesthetics and that but yeah your pallets do spawn here and that so for your dog roots and linden and that you get four from there these i forgot to, uh, no, i haven't said spawn set one to spawn so yeah you get four of those in terms of how much they weigh 400 kilograms and that so 
Thousand new pallet, yeah, you can't lift those, I'm afraid. I don't think I've got the liftable pallet mods enabled, so that may be why. But yeah, moving on to your garden act. So you do get a large stack of pallets, and that's so that's a three by sorry, sorry, six by three. So it's that six, twelve, eighteen pallets you get. I have to go across just to the greenhouse. Okay, I forgot to set pallets to spawn, but yeah, you can see the pallets spawn along here, as with any normal greenhouse again, you get about, what's that, one, two, three, about six or so, six or seven pallets spawning potentially. Moving along, let's have a look at some of these dryers and that, so, this is just a old shed, but it's utilising the dryer system, and yes, you get your pallet racks and that, and then, not too shabby. I don't think there's also a light switch in this as well, since it's an old building. But yeah, this I'm going to go over in a sec, because I do have a screenshot of that, and I'll put it up in a sec to fully explain it all. And then yeah, you've got your modern dryer net. And yeah, open the gate net to the shed's net. There we go. But yeah, again, got your pallet racks and that, lovely job there, you got your sign, so this explains everything of what goes into what. That is the shed light, there we go. And then yeah, moving on to how you process it all, so yeah, got your great production facility. One, no, no, that's a carpentry one, this is, so sorry. But yeah, your pallets spawn along here, four pallets at a time. Potentially you get another rack, but yeah, nothing to spoil. I thought you could have gotten, you know, two by fours, but I'm guessing not. Anyways, moving on to our last process. And oh, sorry, that was the lab, this is the factory now. So pack spawn, yeah, so we'll see you get the two by fours here and that. Items go in here if you want to manually transport them. But yeah, so that's just a quick overview of the modded items on their own. Now to fully explain everything, so what I'm going to do is, right about now, I'm going to put up a screen a sh screenshot over this, and so yeah, you get your plants that. So from your large greenhouses and garden, you get your Rabena, Mint, Lemon Bomb, Thyme, Camilla, and Peppermint. And from your orchard, so you got your linden orchard to get your linden, and your dog rose orchard to get your dog rose. Very simplistic there. From this, you can process these into either the factories or dryers. So if we have a look. So the linden and dog rose, it can go straight into the herbal tea factory. Lovely jubbly, all fine. The items from your greenhouses, they'll need to be dried via the old and sash or modern dryer. So that will get you your dried rose hip. Dried Camilla, dried mint, dried Rabena, dried lemon balm, dried thyme, dried peppermint, and your dried linden. So yeah, your linden and rose hip can also go into the dryers as well. From this, they'll get sent into your either factories or your laboratory and that. So from there, so yeah, your laboratory is the cheaper one of the two. But yeah, the herbal tea factory, that's the one I recommend. And then from these, you can get your item soap, which is Sweet Dreams Herbal Tea, Mint Herbal Tea, Bill Time Herbal Tea, and Lover's Mint Herbal Tea. And then the one that is the most money-making from the quick testing I've done is the Dihut Herbal Tea. So if we go into our production tab. So if we have a look, so your mint herbal tea requires just mint in that. So Again, these ones are very simple in that. So your build time in that herbal tea. And what's that? Time? Oh yeah, so time or dry time. So you do get slightly more bang for your buck if you're using the dried herbs. But again, you can just use the fresh herbs I see here. But you do get slightly less. Like you lose out or gain 25%. So that 50? Yeah, 25%. Yeah, should do a quick math in my head. But yeah, the input requirements are just the same. So for your Lover's Mint Herbal Tea, that requires the mint along with your peppermint. Then go down to your Sweet Dreams Herbal Tea. Oh no, I don't know why I tried to do that song over cover, but oh, that was a bit of a cringe one there. I do, I do apologize there. Anyways, your Sweet Dreams Herbal Tea, 
you use the droids or fresh versions of your so if we have a look so that is your mint and your linden no sorry that's your rabena and linden so yep and all that uh, requires the camilla camo miller sorry not sure if i said camilla oh no definitely not camilla heck that no i make some herbal tea that is yeah well, i was about to say your camo miller i'm not sure i'm pronouncing that right I don't know my tea, so give me a break. But yeah, for the more, one that is definitely worth it. So again, dried or fresh is acceptable in that. So, so if you have a look at the dried one, so the autumn leaf one, that's going to be your dry linden. Along with that, your rose hip, got your camelo or camomilla. There isn't a different icon between those two weird doing that but anyways along with that that does require also the dried peppermint so yeah overall it's not too bad in that so yeah this one is the one I recommend because if you look at the ratios in that 96 cycles per month 200 out very standard now you do lose a bit so that's 50 100 250 to 150 or 200 Compare that to 300 for 200, so you do get slightly more out, I think, from the herbal tea in that. And then, yeah, probably going over drying that, you lose 25% from that. Which, again, makes sense that you don't get everything out to be dry. There is a bit of moisture, a bit of weight in that fresh item that does obviously lead to the production losses. But overall, it ain't too bad. Overall, again, it's a cracking ball in that. Now, I've done a bit, a bit of testing as well, and as I mentioned, overall I've got some notes here, so for example, the old dryer and the herbal tea lab is the cheaper option than that, so you want to do a very simple, easy production, so we have a look at productions in that, so going across again, so yeah, the old dryer is a good one, along with that, the lab, so that's 95 grand compared to 300 grand or 350 grand for the factory. Overall, it does have a solar throughput. These items will be accepted via the Schultz's sell everything sell point. So, if you look at our prices and that, so forget about your normal stuff. We can sell your uh, raw items from the greenhouses and all that as they are, but. You do not get a lot, like 36, 25, 40, 20s and that. Yeah, so again, they're very consistent throughout the year. Ignore the fluctuation char is get 26 to 28, 35 to 37, so very consistent on there. But yeah, so yeah, it's not really worth a lot. Even once you dry it, so for example, the dried, let's look at dried mint, so that is. 76 for a thousand years you can get versus what 37 yeah so again it's worth drying it is even with that loss you get in the yieldage and that so but again i do not recommend this if you want to go i recommend go all the way and get your herbal teas and that so this is where you start making the big bucks and that so Pretty much, growing and drying is not worth it unless you're actually processing these items, I recommend. And yeah, again, the prices in that, you look at that, 1762 though, upwards to 1950 So, at the moment, again, we're at the low prices, but the one that's worth the most is the, again, requires the more the more items than that, which makes sense, is the Specialist I Hutz Herbal Tea. But even Sweet Dreams, if you just do these two now, these are worth it. But if you're having these other items done and processed, might as well make tea and that. So, and then from these alone, you can make between Sweet Dreams and your Mint Herbal Tea. Just from those items alone, once fully utilised, you can get a million or two a year from it. Easy enough in that. Obviously, if you want to get Herbal Tea in that, so I do recommend the Die Hutz Herbal Tea. If you want to do... One item, die the hoods for or herbal tea is the best. You get 33% more from the factory compared to the laboratory. So how I got out was from the ratios and that. So once again, 
So yeah, that between that, Die Hutch Herbal Tea and that. 150 recipe per 96 cycles, a month for that, so 150 times 96, that is what? 14,400, I think, roughly, if the math is correct. But yeah, compare that to the factory net. And that is what? 200 to 96, 150, 296 versus what? Yeah, just the 150, so. But yeah, so <clears throat> the laboratory, you can. Well, sorry, the laboratory does require just the dried items, but you can use the fresh items and that for that as well. So, again, that does cut out the need for it to be dried and that. You can just have the greenhouses and then forget about drying them. And then, yeah, that will do it just fine in that, to be honest. That does require the same amount of input, but if you dry it, you get that 25% bonus from it. So, that's why I think it's worth it in that, personally, in that. And yeah, just looking at my notes as well. Yeah, Schultz is everything. Oh yeah, Schultz is everything container. So this is what I meant. So if you look at the prices again, so prices and that. Yeah, at the moment there is a twenty pound box whatever difference. Fifty there. Eighty there. Oh, no, sorry, I was looking at, am I looking at the wrong one? Wholesale, yeah, forget about that. Yeah, these two I'm looking at, so at the moment that is, what, 120, and that is about the biggest difference I'll see. But again, this could go either way, like, throughout testing this over 12 months, the price fluctuation does vary between either 120 bucks or so, give or take, for the market sort or for the sell every container, so pretty much, yeah. It's a 2.7% difference, this is how I figured it out, so... Is it worth having the market stall? No, technically. But that's only if you got the Schultz to sell everything container. However, again, that's just me stating that. But anyway, so... Got to lose four key points, so... In terms with... The throughputs and that, per month and that, so... Once again, we're going to need to go back to our productions and that, so... We go into the factory. So this is where you get more bang for your buck. So potentially that from the factory that you can get 19,200 liters of the Hoots Herbal Tea a month. And yeah, that's just from the dry recipe. If you're including the fresh recipe in that, that's you're almost doubling the amount you're getting in that. But again, I'm not going to that. This test was issued just for the dried items and nothing else. So. Once you add that on top, along with your other items and that, you explain why, how easily you can get 5 million plus. The testing I've done, I got 3.3 .3 million over a course of a year and that, but... Well, potentially 3.3 .3 million in a year, but we'll give that... Yeah, forget about that, so... From there, that requires 4,000 and 800 years of dry products and that, so... Yeah, it's terms with your dried inputs and that, that requires 4,800 litres a month. So, this is why I said you'll need two factories in that, because, or at least two factories, I'm saying. You technically do need four in that, potentially. The old dryer, so if we have a look here, you can get 10,800 litres a month. For the modern dryer, it's double, so that is 21,600 litres a month. So, just go over all of this and that, so, you'll need 4,800 litres of dried items for the maximum throughput and that, of dried items, so, you'll need two factories for the old dryer, or four factories for the modern one, so, yeah, this could go exponentially massive and that, and I do mean absolutely massive, mahoosive in a way in that. But yeah, in terms with the requirements to be dried and that, so in terms with, you know, what is required to be dried and that, that is 14,400, and this is again, just using the old dryer and that. If you want to go with the modern dryer, again, just double that, so, yeah, 14,400 for the dry, 28,800 for the modern one. So for this, you'll need two factories for one old dryer. And for one old dryer to get everything you need from the greenhouses and the 
um, orchards and that. You only need just one dog rose. Yeah, one dog rose. Um, what? No, not Linda. Nope. Yeah, just one dog rose. Along with this, you'll need five gardens or technically four greenhouses. Doing the math, breaking it all down, is it works out to be 3.1 greenhouses you need in that, but round it up to four in that because you can't get 0.1 of a greenhouse. So again, that is just to meet the requirements to be dried. So for the old dryer, which is 40,000 and 400 years a month. And as I said, if you're using the modern dryer, just double it. So for example, four factories will need Sorry, for four factories you need one modern dryer. For that you then will need the two dog roses and then potentially ten or yeah, ten gardens or six point two so let's just say seven greenhouses. So but yeah, in terms with the cost of all this and that, so again I mentioned about you know you need in two factories, one dryer, one dog roses and that and so how much does this all cost? So potentially this is either eight hundred oh sorry, yeah, eight hundred and forty grand or seven hundred and forty seven and a half thousand litres to set up in that. That is to be fully optimized based on one dryer. Again, I'm mentioning one old dryer. If you're using the modern dryer, you could be bottlenecking that. So again, adjust this to however you wish. So the two factories, three hundred fifty 350 grand each, so that means you'll need 700 grand in factories. The old dryer is 15 grand. One of those dog roses or orchards and that is 5 grand. And then either the greenhouses. So yeah, this is when I say about in is get the gardens, not the greenhouses, because for the greenhouses, you'll need technically four of them, so that is 120 grand you need to be spent. Yeah, you can say three grand and, that, and not be fully utilised that by having three greenhouses. Whatever, that's down to you. But again, for those five gardens and that, that is just 27 and a half grand. Okay, if you're limited on space, I'd then go with the greenhouses because you can get two greenhouses into the space of one of these gardens you can see in front of me and that, so yeah. Again, what's best for you is depending on, again, what map you're on, how much space you've got in that. Obviously, I'm on my test map, so I got away with pretty much any space in that, so... But yeah, those five gardens, 27 and a half grand. In terms with the peak sale prices in that, so this is where, how much money you can make in that, so... If we go into our prices section over here, so... Uh, let's finance this, so yeah, Die Hut's Herbal Tea on easy... <coughs> sorry. On easy, that is 7,300 at its maximum sale price, so... That's going to be around May... If you get a great demand that goes above this, then go for it. For medium, which I am on at the moment, the peak price is 4,400. I have seen that going over 4,380, as you can see on the right there. So that's why I'm saying 4,400 potentially in that. But yeah, even again, if you're setting that to the lowest sell point of the year in that, so you're losing, what, 10% in profit in that? So overall, not too bad of a loss in that. Again, that's why I recommend this tea production, because you can get absolutely stupid amounts of money even at the worst sell price sell, sell time in that however so in terms with you know how much would this need to be to be fully optimized in that so those two factories i've mentioned that per month you get 30 fa yeah 30 thousand and 400 euros a month so total time to get profit if you send everything at peak sell price is either 2.9 months or or three months basically, or 2.66 months. So this depends on what economy setting you're using that. So, cause yeah, economy settings does vary in that. So 4.4 months on medium. And yeah, so basically it's about three months. Yeah, just gonna look over my notes and that. Yeah, it's three months for, three months on easy, four months on medium. So estimate terms of profit in that. So again, my profits estimate is based on the two factories, which in total can get 38,000 and 400 litres a month in that. Send everything at maximum sell price. That is a staggering 3.38 million pounds, dollars, euros, yen, whatever you want to use in that on easy mode. Or for medium economy settings, that does go down to 2.027 million. So 2 million and 27,000 a year in that. And yeah, that may seem not a lot, especially the setup cost. You know, you're spending what? 800 grand potentially in that. But if you go with the gardens and that, total output or total upfront cost in that upfront is 750 grand. And when I say about 
it being 3.38 million on easy or 2 million on normal. Again, that is just using one recipe in that. So that is just that is just from this alone, the dried herb tea in that, or dried herb items in that. Once you include in that, so just from that alone, two factories of those, so an extra 150 adding on so that is 28,000 and 800 years of extra you can have so 28,800 years times it's maximum sell price at 7,300 years on easy or 4,400 I said on medium right yeah 4,400 on medium or 7,300 on easy mode so for easy mode per month that is an extra 210 grand or 210,240 times up over the course of a year and that that's on its own on easy mode is an, another two and a half million again if you'll do it on you know medium mode so again this is what some people may do so that is an extra 126,720 a month times that over the course of a year that on its own is another one and a half mil so on medium mode just doing the drop die hurts herbal tea in that that is what 3.5 mil on medium and another 5.3 5.4 mil on easy a year that is so and again I'm not even bothering including all this. I haven't done really much tests in terms of, you know, figuring out how much you can get from Sweet Dreams, the Lover's Mint, and the Boo Time in that, Mint Herbal Tea. That's why I'm saying overall you can easily get over 5 mil a year. 6, 7 mil, I'll say, on top of that. So, yeah, I'm tempted to do a bit of testing on this, but I'm not because I've got other mods to review in that. So, again, I know this has been a bit of a long section. And hopefully in editing I will have broken this down a bit to make it a bit easier than that and explain why this is an awesome production and again why you should go for this. So this was the Die Hutz Herbal Tea in that by Shenben. And now we'll go on to our equipment for the day. So we've got the small animal trader. This is by Slykiv and Voxel. 10.86 megabytes to download. And yep, this is a small trader that can transport two pigs, two sheep, or one cow. Let's see, yep, a simple body trader. So yeah, we've got a cow and two sheep sitting here. And yeah, you can find this under tools, under animal transport. Go towards the end. It's only a thousand to buy. In terms with slot counts, it is three slots goes down to one, weighs 310 kilograms. Do you have some color options in that too? Not many, so yeah, main greens, greys and blacks, reds and blues. So main colour would change the metal frame. Design colour would change the wood, so different kinds of wood colours. Then you got your browns and that. And yeah, pretty much it. And then room colours, very similar to it's got to make sure, yeah, pretty much a mixture of this main and design colour. So rims, set green, and there you go. So yeah, let's just hop it into our tractor over here and that. So yeah, we'll sort of have a look at them a bit more detailed than that, so there we go. Once you get this hooked up, not many controls, just L1 and X on the PlayStation. That will drop the back down so you can load your animal into respectively. Then we'll just fold it up. So yeah, we've got sheep and the cows. Or cow and sheep. So let's go and Go to the animal dealer just over here in that. And let's go and put some sheep in. So go to the trigger in that. Open the animal dialer box. So yeah, let's go and get some pigs in there. Oh yeah. So can we hold a very small amount? But yeah, if you've got a small farm in that, you know what that'll do just fine. Does the job it needs. A lovely job thing. Just move out of the way. And yep, yeah, it is a very simple trader now, but it's well made, it is, to be fair. Got your worn triangle on the back, and that, no indicators or lights or anything like that. Just, yeah, a very simple old style trader that's used to transport some animals. But, anyways, that is a small animal trader by Sly Kiff and Voxel. Next. Now for the Fiegel VFW 10600. This is by Backy. 4.64 megabytes download, 80,000 to buy, 85 horsepower required, and this is a 10.4 meter broken whip, sorry, tanker spreader in that. So yeah, the 10600 in the name is obviously the capacity, 10,600 litres. You'll find this under your shopping app, under tools, go to your slurry tanks, go towards the end, and there we go, 80,000 to buy, as mentioned, 85 horsepower required, 10.4 meter working weight weighs 2.6 tons. 
So yeah, different configurations for the rims, wide or just standard, bar yes or no at the back, it's automatically yes, along with the fender, so you can have a just a selenced version of it, doesn't affect the cost and that, so at the end of the day it's down to you. Rims, got silver, black or a, where did it be like a nuclear, not quite a floor green, but a nice light lime green, like nuclear lime green I think. Anywho, go to the back. And just get this hooked up. So yeah, just show us off in the field. Show us off in action, so... I think if we go to our grass field over here... That's not fully fertilized. So yeah. Evo, yeah, it's ready to cut in that. So we'll see, sorry that being put down. Yeah, the working speed is not a lot at 5 miles an hour, and I just want to quickly confirm that, 5 miles an hour, no, it says 10 miles an hour to work at speed, and that's why, because we're putting on double application, so at the moment we've got double application being enabled, but yeah, switch it to the normal single application, then yeah, 10, 11 miles an hour, give or take, you know what, that ain't too shabby in that. So yeah, you've got a small farm in that, you know, 10,600 years is not the largest of capacities, but you can get a fair bit done, you know. I think they, this could be just a bit of an extra way off fertilizing your crops from your free waste product from your animals and that. And yeah, you can still use you know, your spreaders, your chemicals and that, if you wish. And yeah, there we go. Very simple enough. So that was the Fiegel VFW 10600 by Baggy. Nice bit of detailing, nice little mod. Not much to say about it. And now let's go on to our second modded sorry, spreader of the day. Now for the Rhino Agro Limited Edition pack. This is by Kalirugan Modding Design along with Rhino Agro. Or Rhino Agro. I guess that's just a brand of Rhino Agro now. A little collab collaboration in that. But yeah, we've got two story tanks here today. We've got the CTR10, CTR8. Both of them do a 10 meter working width spread. The difference is the size, so 8,000 and 10,000 litres respectively, so this is CTR8, so 8,000 litres, and the 10,000 litre one there, the CTR10, 27.5 grand versus 22.5 grand. You'll find these under tools, under story tanks, and yeah, just go towards the end, as I mentioned, that prices are now already working with the same working speed of 6 miles an hour compared to 10 miles an hour to the one we just looked at, so looking at that compared to two, I'll go with the Flegal Nat in my opinion, but yeah, we're reviewing this new brand Nat, Rhino Agro Nat, so this is a new brand in that, 2FS. Configurations and all that is the same, which is literally just the wheel setup, so standard, standard two, standard, standard two for the plate, or the, sorry, the wheels. And yeah, it's just a difference between like sim radials or sim radials and a bit more chunky here, grippy tires and that, or a bit more with tread on it. License plate is an option at the back. So yeah, overall first look for this new brand 2 FS. To be fair, I do like it. And they got the the black and yellow look of it. That I do like in that. I'm gonna go to the top. You know, you got your hoses and that. Lovely jubbly. The connectors all look findy dandy. So I think if we go to the CTR10, which is one to our left. Actually, does this one have anything in it? Yeah, that's got Surrey in, this has got Digestate, so... Yeah, fill up in that, once I'll send it as a Pretty standard in that, so nothing to shout home about. Also this time, I've actually got a bit of field prepped here, so you can actually see the story being put into action, so got normal application rate enabled. And there we go, so yeah, this was fully fertilized still, so yeah, I can't really see the story being put down, but trust me bro, it's working. And yeah, if you enable the dub application it does go down to 3 miles an hour, down to you what, what you want to use that, because at the end of the day, putting that extra application on, that means you get your two fertilizer states, 
and then just in one go, rather than, you know, go at six miles an hour, do one go, and then have to wait a month or two before putting the next application on. So, at the end of the day, we're in order to use double or single application. That is down to you. So, at the end of the day, I'm just looking at number one that time, to be fair. Yeah, I actually like it, you know, again, I don't use sorry tanks, to be fair. But when I do, I do like to look at these. Better than, you know, all the metal fleeker ones. You see all the time in that. And yeah, it's a lot better than some of the base game ones for its similar caliber in that. So, 13,000 years. Half the price. Sorry, that's double the price compared to the Rhino Agro in that. And yeah, you know, you just get these little ones here in that. The single axle ones. Yes, they're okay in that. They do have more of a working width, more speed, and more working, you know, more working speed in that. But again, I like the look of it in that. I think that's just what sells me on it. It's like, it's not all, you know, galvanized metal in that, all the crap all the time. It's actually something a bit different in that. So, to be fair, we're in an aggro. Nice to see a new brand in FS22. So yeah, that is the Rhino Agro limited edition pack by Kaliruga Mod inside at Rhino Agro. Now to go on to our new premium DLC Harvester. And here it is, it's the Rooster 604 premium DLC, this is by Joga Dim. 11.29 megabytes to download, and this is pretty much just a copy of the, I'd like to say the base game, I think it's Beat Harvester we've got, so... Yeah, Beat Harvester, the Rootmaster 604. 98 and a half grand. Premier working width, 6 miles an hour. And is it under here? Yeah, the DLC version. So yeah, it's 8,500 cheaper. Same amount of horsepower requirement, 6... Yeah, same amount of horsepower requirement. Better in terms of capacity, it's got 8,000 capacity. Versus 6,000 years of base game. Same tonnage and that. Terms with your slot counts and all that. So the slot count for this is 15 slots goes down to 1. But unlike with the base game 1, you can actually have a colour configuration on it. So, you know, pick your favourite brand of tracks you want to use or just favourite colour in general. For me, a nice hot pink always does the job. Shame you can't change the rules in that. But why have this very similar thing to the base game in that? Again, is in the name, premium DLC in that, so this could let you harvest the carrots, parsnip, and red beet in that from the new uh, premium DLC crop we had a while back, you know, with Zelonkel in that. So I think I've got a field of parsnips ready to go. So it turns with, you know, the look of it in that, again, it's exactly the same as base game in that. Also, if Actually, if I have a look, you can do your sugar beet in that, so... But if you want to do the sugar beet, it does say in the mod description you need the horn and topper in that, so... But that's just a little thing to note. Oops, camera angle, what the hell are you doing there? But yeah, fold and unfold the harvester. So all that is is just the output pipe there. Put your pipe in, the pipe, oh sorry, conveyor belt there. And I think what we can do this is, if I get this, first of all, check this is parsnip. Did I say parsley or parsnip? I meant parsnip, not parsley in that. I think, was it parsley, is parsley just a herb in that? Well, I'm not sure, but anyway, it's again distracted here, so drop you down, off we go. And yeah, there we go, harvesting the parsnip now. So yeah, this will fill up very quickly. And this is a problem with the premium DLC now, you know, not main mod stuff, you know, that has the capacity for this. But what you can do is, I think if it's set a node, and hire a worker. I don't know, okay, can't do it with this here, but... Regardless, I still want to hire a worker in that. That can do what? How many rows is that we're doing at the moment? One, two, three, four, five rows is it? 
So yeah, three mirror work with all five rows. And not to be fair, it is doing it just fine. Parsnip. That does look a bit weird, it does. It looks like just... It's meant to be like a beige yellow colour, not not no, just like white. Uh, is that thing or what? Again, I'm not too sure. You know, what since I've done any parsnip or whatever in that. But yeah, that just looks depressing, that does. Grey parsnip. Who would like to have grey parsnip? Not me. Actually, I need to look at this, because... Yeah, that may be an issue. That maybe it's just a modded thing, that. I'm not too sure. But yeah, let's have a little look here a sec. Nope, apparently that's just a thing, that is. I thought parsnip was a bit more beige than that. Shows you how much attention I've paid into the new or well, improved DLC in that. But yeah, grey parsnip. Well, anywho, let's move out of the way. At the end of the day, it's a very simple equipment, just adapted from the base game version. But with a slight increase in capacity in that, that is nice to see. I like when things have a bit more of a I see a realistic capacity for FS22 aspect now. I don't mean, you know, stupid 10 million capacities and that. I mean, again, things like the big technology stuff and that. 6,000 years base game. I'd love to see if that was like, even 8,000 there. I'd love if it was like, you know, 20,000 years. A bit more useful than that. But at the end of the day, it's what it is and that. But anyways, that was the... Rooster 604 Premium DLC by Juga Dim. Next. On to our final equipment for today. We got the John Deere or JD Grapple Bucket. This is by Matt Trucker 921, so you know this is going to be an absolute banger. And oh boy, is this ever a banger of a mod or not. So, first of all, it is 3.08 megabytes to download. And yeah, it's just a simple bucket in that. So, you can have different configurations, cost 2.5 grand. Standard capacity of 1,500 years. However, you can also tweak this, you know, to have, you know, a bit more of a finesse with it and that, you know, how, how it looks. Along with a 25,000 year unrealistic capacity in that. So, also, it says special thanks to Tired, Tired Iron Modding for his help with scripting. Without his help, this mod wouldn't have been here. So, thank you, Tired Iron Modding. But anyway, so you'll find this under front loaders. So just go down here, front loader tools and that. Go towards the end. So yeah, got your bucket. Two and a half thousand pounds, dollars or euros. Terms with your slot counts and that. It is just three slots, goes down to one. But yeah, so add a grapple, no, or yes. So with this, you can thing you know like do logging that. Where do you install? When you add the grapple, it does this like, you know, like sort of glitchiness to it in that. Yeah, sort of like glitchy there, it shakes about now. I'm not too sure what that is. Also, you got your shovel teeth, yes or no, short or long, depends on what you wish. Also, yeah, you got your manufactured decals, John Deere, case, vent, Kubota, lizard, and back to John Deere. The attacher type, so this is only for front loaders or skid steer loaders. However, if you got the CLZ pack by, I think it's DD More Passion, even though I'll stop using DD More Passion's mods and that, you can use those, you know, to get attachers, like configurators and that, you know, in terms with adjusting, you know, the attacher type. So you can have this front loader attacher here. And you can have an adapter plate onto it that can fit to a take hander or a wheel loader if you wish. Along with this, you've got your discharge speed standard or fast. So yeah, this is for both capacities and that. And then finally, the capacity itself, standard or unrealistic, so 25,000 liters. And yeah, even with, you know, trying to go with the most expensive options here. Base price, seven grand. Colors, we got all the colors, including hot pink. Adds a bit more to it, but you know what? I don't mind that, so let's go with, I don't know, nice construction yellow. Actually, you know what? let's go with green. I like green, I do today. 
green four. And then yeah, for the grapple color, so we'll pick a more distinctive one. Red, so that changes the hydraulic pistons as well as the grapple color. Then you got your trim. And that could be a nice blue, so that's the metal cage there. And that is it. So got two of them here now. I think this is the more unrealistic one here. That's a good thing with the unrealistic capacity, you do have the full zero weight in that, so this has literally no weight to it in that. So you can have 25,000 years of anything. And yet, yeah, what? Not budging at all. Also, you can adjust the grapple, so R1, right stick, left, to right, the that. But yeah, so you can tip this out. Oh, that's a fast discharge that is. Ooh, that was fast. But there we go. Just drop it down. Yeah, to pick up speed, hitting as fast as the discharge, but what does the job? Fine. And what's to raise that bucket? There we go. But yeah, I mean, what does the job in that? Nice little function there. But yeah, moving on to the, you know, the normal one. Obviously, this does have a normal discharge rate, so... Oh, not that. Yeah, there we go, normal discharge. I can date, it does the job in that. But yeah, this does have its a weight to it, so if you're carrying, I don't know, 1,500 years of stones in that, you would not be able to fit this on, so... Actually, I can shut off now. Oh no, I can lose. These are these stat, but if you go with the standard version, the realistic capacity, do not put a 1,500 years of stone snap into this and expect it to carry it with a tight hander because this was very tippy. This was when I tested it out, but I indeed does the job in that. And actually, I quite like it now. You know, the gravel and that, so this will be handy for logging and that. Actually, since we're here now, I've got some logs over here. Let's go and test that, shall we? And there we go. So yeah, I thought, you know, just quick grab some logs and that. Yeah, time has elapsed a little bit. Yeah, I had to quick pop out. I've got to pause the game. So yeah, we're at half past five now, so ignore that. But yeah, because we're actually uses to grab logs and that. It's not the most efficient of log grabs, so personally, I wouldn't recommend this mod for a log grabber and that, but maybe if I had this on a tractor with a massive rear weight on it, like a 7 ton weight on the back, then yeah, logging can be done with this, but I thought I'd just quick show that, so... But yeah, so just quick show how you pick up a log and that. Usually how I like to grab logs with like, these kind of forks and that is like, you know, push it this way and that. Lower it, like so. And then wrap it. Sometimes you'll get a log that pops out, sometimes you don't. But yeah, that's the versatility of this mod. Now, for again, just quick shoot out and that. But yeah, apologies for all these. Well, for you, it's going to be seconds. For me, it was like an hour or so I had to pop out. But, anyways, that was the JD Gravel Bucket by Matt Trucker 91 Awesome mod. Highly recommend it. And now we'll go on to our two modded vehicles for today, or technically four now, because one of them is a pack of three. And it is at the store. Now for our vehicles. Now I've got two modded vehicles we're looking at. So first one is the Tayhander pack. And yeah, essentially what it is, it's a, free, a pack of free Tayhanders. And really, all it is really, it's a modded version of the base game equipment we've got. So we've got the Ferrisin 626 Classic, the New Holland T47.42 Elite, and the Monito MRT 840. And the only difference is it is, it's got the same basic base game stuff, all the characteristics. But additionally, it's got a number of animations which can be used by the mouse or the interactive controller and that. So, in terms of slot counts and that, so the New Holland is 16, the Manitou is 9 slots, and the Ferrisen is 10 slots. So, first of all, you'll find these under vehicles, under Tayanders. So yeah, we've got the Ferris, was it Ferrisen one? Yeah, the Ferrisin 626 Classic 0.52, just got my notes. Ah yeah, here are some other ones. Ah yeah, exact same pricing, everything in that. So, configurations are 
actually, you know what? Let's have a look at the configuration. So we got the Manitou, yeah, 840, 145 plus. So, yeah, base game, just standard wheels and that. But for the mobile, you do have some extra configuration. So, first of all, you got the exhaust cover, yes or no. Along with that, you got fenders, with and without the fenders, front, back, all around, or none. So yeah, it's not just animations, and there's actually some quality of life characteristics. A lot of we had a... what's one I use often? Things like the Class Scorpion, or the GCP. I think these two are the more popular take handlers in the game. Not saying that the Ferrisin ones, they are quite popular, I've seen that, but again, that's just a personal thing. So yeah, hop into the ferrisin. So if you look on the left, we've got control groups now. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and back to one. So all these controls, you take hand on that. So I shall hop into that one. The camera angle's a bit wonky. It's like tip side to side a bit. I think, I'll, I think this one is a bit better than that. So what I'll do is scrap the new Holland. Move it out of the way, that. So, yeah, turn for the controllers, that. So, yeah, for your control group one, you'll have your, like, your normal take handler functions, that. Ignore the pile there. So, yeah, let's go into our little area over here, that. So, yeah, controls, that. L1, right stick up and down, does the controls, that. Then left to right that. And then R1, right stick up and down, does the boom. So, yeah. Basic stuff there. Now I've got the seating and steering wheel. So L1, right stick left to right. Tilt the seat forward and back. So you can really adjust your seat to however you want. Then L1, R1, right stick left to right. Oh, sorry, right stick up and down. Does the seat adjustment. So down to go forward. And then push right stick up to go back. And yeah, just have notification. Batteries though, so yeah. We ignore that. Then R1, right stick up and down, does the steering, so you can adjust the steering column as you wish. Again, individual preferences in that. Now for the door, so L1, right stick left to right, opens and closes the door. L1, R1, right stick up and down. I think that does the back window. Yeah, so go outside. That does the back window quite slowly in that. Then R1, right stick up and down. Does the not the complete door, but just the extra door there. So you can still have your door closed, but you know, with a bit of ventilation now whilst you're working, just crack open that window a little bit. For control group four, so this is going to be the exterior. So L1, right stick, left to right. Oh, yeah, does the mirrors and that. So yeah, that does the mirror. So that's the right mirror. L1, R1, right stick, up and down. Does your flat cover there? We'll look at it in a sec. And then R1, right stick, left to right, does your left mirror that. So just, yeah, swings it out and that. So you've got to clear, you know, the uh, vehicle frame that. You can do that, but yeah. L1, R1, right stick, up and down, does the engine cover. So this is what I would love to have more equipment than that to be with, especially with FS25. It's just the level of animations and that, and the details inside. So. It's not just a case of the outside is all very posh and nice, but the inside is just like, you know, crap, rubbish. This is actually good, so... And then, yeah, that's four. This is half five. Well, yeah, different ones, it's got different controls and that, so... We go to the Manitou, so... L1, R1. So that's mirrors, let's go to... Yeah, that's mirrors. Oh yeah, these ones you can adjust them up and down. That's with that's with R1 that is. Then L1, right stick left to right does that. L1 R1 does nothing. Control group force, doors and steering wheel. So L1 R1 nothing. L1 does that. R1 does the rear window, yep. And yeah, oh, you can actually open and close the window next. That's R1 right stick up and down, so pretty nice. Armrest, L1, R1, nothing. L1 does that. R1 and does the seat adjustment. That's nice, actually. 
So your right stick there to right does that. Up and down does that. Not too bad, actually. Yeah, we'll look at the ferris in that. So yeah, got your tail under controls. Lovely jubbly. Mirrors. L1, right stick, left to right does that. L1, R1, right stick, left to right. Raises and lowers it. And then your R1 does your right mirrors, but lose. Doors. L1, R1, left to right. R1. Actually, if I close that. Then R1, right stick, left to right does that. I guess that does the rear window. Yeah, actually, I do, I do love that, you know, the animation of that. Not just, just pop the window open, you know, adjust the latch and then opens it. Not too bad. And see, one, so that's L1, right stick, come down, does that. Or oh, sorry, L1, right stick, left to right. L1, R1, right stick, up and down, just, yeah. Boop, 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 on <laughs> the seat. And then the press R1, right stick, left to right, does the seat. Oh, nice. Control group 5, so R1, right stick, left to right, does that. Up and down. What's that do? Ooh, raises like this headrest of that. That is nice. Big sort of seat there, so you've got a bit more lumbar support. Not too bad. And then you've got exterior in that, so. If I turn the engine off. Oh, I need the engine off for this, so. Fair enough. So yeah, R1, right stick up and down, does the cover in that. And that is it. So yeah, let me just turn these engines off a sec so we can wrap things up here. So, yeah, but overall, all of these have their individual uses in that. You know, different animations in that. But I've got to say it again, may not be the most banger of a mod out for everyone in that. But if you, if you use it, especially like the ferrets and that, I see these on Facebook, Discord, and that being used a lot in that. As well as on YouTube by other creators, but that's a very small niche, that is, but... Anyways, overall, cracking and banger of a mod in that. Again, as I said, may not be for everyone, but this is something I can appreciate. And I really hope going forward, I to implement something like this with FS25. I know FS25 is, what, two months away now? Or two and a half months away? Or three weeks or whatever, but... Yeah, hopefully Jones can implement something like this a bit more in the next game. But anyways, that was the Tear Hunter pack by Just Farbin. Next. On to our final mod of the day. We've got the Sheer Profi Tier 4B MY18. This is by Austria Modding. 26.54 megabytes to download. Slot count for this is 22 slots. And you'll find these under small tractors. So if you go across, small tractors, have a little looky look towards the end. 120 grand to buy, 145 to 175 horsepower, 263 litres in fuel, top speed of 31 miles an hour, weighing 6.7 tonnes, and as I mentioned, slot counts was 22 miles for me, it's gone down to 1 since I've got multiple of these already. But yeah, anyway, so let's look at the configuration, so engine, so... Got your 4115 Profi, that's 145 horsepower, the CVT version. Then you got your 4125 with CVT version, so that's just the transmission. Then you got your 4135, that's 169 horsepower. Then your 4145, 165 horsepower. I sort of see the price does go up a little bit, but overall, not a crazy amount. And then I think lastly, this is the 6145 with or without the CVT transmission. So yeah, top engine spec, 175 horsepower now, will set you back 157 grand. Or well, actually no, without the CVT, 145 grand. So again, depends on what your preference is with the transmissions and that. Wheel brand, so you got your Troborg, that's going to be standard. With the wheel weights on the back, so that gives you an extra 1.2 tonnes. White tires, white tires with weights. So again, that's an extra 1.2 tons. Narrows, rear twin narrows, rear twin wheels, twin wheels all the way around to back to standard. And Michelin's going to be the same. Continental standard twins. Lovely jubbly, same as always. You might have got your whites and then your whites with weights. BKT, my favourite one because you get the most grip out of these tyres and that. And actually, the thing, 
quite a diversion there. If you're one of those like to grit retires, look on YouTube now. There are a couple of content creators that's done and though the ones I've watched that was by Joseph Farmer and that. And I think Farmer Cop has also done something about this. Now again, I would have done this, but this was done years ago by these creators and that, so feel free to check them out if you're interested in the tires and that. But yeah, so usual standards, and then your first lines. Yep, yeah, same as always. And then your Nokian Scottish Standard, then your communal tires and that. And that's it. Monitors, yes or no. So that's going to be the monitor in the cab there. Front fenders, yes, automatically or no. So you get rid of the front fender, you do get back minus, well, you do get back £1,132, dollars, whatever. Auxiliary, working lights, front and back, that is standard. Or none to get a £1,000 back. Front and rear, individually you get £500 back. That's the thing I like as well, is like, you know, for a lot of these people do like to have lights in that. And have the option automatically enabled in that, in the configurations, it's nice. Again, I wish personally I prefer that with modders and that, but again, that's only a personal preference, but I think that would be a better option, I think. And then, yeah, you know, just take the money back in that. Lovely job, Lee, if you don't want it. Beacon lights, left and right, none, left, right, and then left and right there, so that's the rears. There we go. And the front mountain, so again, standard that, CVT, well not CVT, sorry, P2 shaft in that. So your standard of hydraulics, so yeah, it's automatically adding nine grand. And then again, take some money back if you want the front hydraulics without the P2 shaft. That's something actually I don't think we've seen that, because usually when you get your front PTO, you also come with the front hydraulics. But again, have something just without the option is nice. And again, so you got your whore your ones and then your standard ones so again that is what I do like in that that's actually nice does it do anything at the rear I don't think so nope then your fuel tank capacity automatically is 263 liters if you want to save a couple of quid in that to get the 280 liter one I don't know why you would does it do anything for the fuel tank visually in that so I think the fuel tank is there on the left Next to the ab blue net. Well, no, it doesn't. So, I don't know why that is an option, but hey, it's an extra option that I don't mind seeing, so fair enough. Front of the attacher, yes or no. And then you got your quick and hoyer ones. You will have your basic color palettes along with some interesting ones, so yeah. Got different kinds of more kind of blues in that, like Pokemon's, Gold Four and that. Yeah, you got your voucher and all that John Deere stuff, but also you do have your you know, construction communal orange in that. But also, you do have the gold in that. That I do like. And then you've got your black. Yeah, black, jet blacks, and all that. I think these are basic color pads now. Just mixed with things like the. Sh what's that? Schulten? Schulten? I think Schulten sounds better, more German than that. But also, you've got your hardy ones. Yeah, you got your light blue azules. So yeah, got a whole plethora of car options. But anyways, I'll go on to the 6145 here, obviously, in that, so... Have a little look, a little test ride in that. And overall, not too bad, not too shabby in that. Steering that, not too bad. Also got your lights. Left indicator. I can't really see it. That's actually quite. That is quite dark, that is. Beacons and that. Okay, they were fine in that. But yeah, the indicators, they are quite pale, they are in that. You think, again, maybe the gold in that? I just don't think so. But yeah, it's just very off putting, that is. You know, the indicators and that. Brake lights and that, I'll have a look at those. Apologies there for another helicopter interruption. So yeah, I'm going to take it onto our hill climb here. Again, I'm sure I can have a problem in that, but again, as always what I do with these is test the hill climb capability in that, so... But yeah, overall, it's actually look, looking good now, like steering in that. Very responsive in that, so... 
Here we are at the start of our hill climb. This is a 45 degree incline, so let's go into the cab first of all, get rid of that. And how does it perform? So 18, 20 miles an hour consistently in that. And oh no, we braked. Gets up and going very well, so it's got to the top of the hill climb. Lovely jubbly. But now let's build up top speed now because we'll see how far this thing jumps. So we were at top speed, obviously we lost speed going up, so how far can we jump? 25, bit of a rough bounce, so I'll say that's about 35 meters is jumped in that, so pretty average I was saying that. <laughs> yeah, I think it was a bit average in that. Again, why I've done that, I've got no idea in that, but I thought it was a fun thing you know, to test in that. Things like, you know, vehicle capability and that, you know, like, tackle steep climbs and that. Because not every map is a perfect flat map and that way with all square fields. And I've got to say, it does handle this very well. Again, perhaps it could be more of the BKT tires and that at work. Oh. Okay, that was a bit of a driver error there, but... Again, it does perform quite well in that. And even in the reversing section of this, you know, going up here. Plenty of power on its own now to get up and go now. So, you're not going to be left stranded with this tractor. This tractor is very capable. So, yeah, overall, a nice little quality mod there. Something I wasn't expecting, but again, sometimes it's those things you, know, you don't expect that surprises you. So, this is an awesome tractor. Lots of you know, controls with the animations and that. Because, yeah, you got your L1, right stick up and down, does the rear window. No, I should have done this the first time before testing it. But, yeah, L1, right stick up and down, does the sunroof. Not too bad. L1, left stick left to right. That does over here. As in the cab, so. Alright, does the. That. That's actually pretty nice. L1, R1, right stick does the right door. So yeah, L1, R1, left stick, or, or sorry, right stick, left to right does the left doors, and then up and down does the right doors. So yeah, overall, actually not too bad, I actually love that, and, you know, the animations and that. All the little details of it as well, you know. Absolute beautiful now, like, this has been well done, well designed. And looking at the actual hubs and that, not too bad, not too bad. And even in the cab, like, you know, not having everything roaring and that, just, you know... Sit back, chill, quite in the tractor and that. And actually, it's not too bad. So, let's just sit here and watch as the sun's setting on this mod for you, Nat. And yeah, once again, I know this is very late coming out. This again, it's going to come out late Thursday night, Nat, because I've been caught up this evening, Nat, with oh, just a lot of stuff after work and that. So, yeah, currently it's 9 o'clock. This will be edited up at some point, maybe slightly on Friday. And I do sincerely apologise about this coming out late. Yeah, it's been a bit of a rut as of late, but yeah, get back to mod reviews and that. Something I'll do may as well, so I'm working on some FS25 videos, hopefully, in that soon. Once you do something a bit more than, you know, you see from the likes of DJ Goam, Miss EP, awesome creators and that, don't get me wrong. They are huge inspirations for me and this channel that, you know, created in the first place. But yeah, I'll just do some things differently now. You know, my thoughts now on some of these things we're getting in on FS25 because yeah, I think overall a lot of it is good in that. But I do have worries about how it's all going to be implemented. With I won't say we'll worries now, but yeah, it's quite hyped. It is at the moment, obviously. And that's the thing I want is just be disappointed with the next game in that. But yeah, again, that's going to come up in a future video. I'm going to be working on next week because. Yeah, this Friday, tomorrow, or today, as you're seeing this, I am going to be away after work. It's my club's annual rally, so we've got a three-day rally. And then, yeah, got a funeral next week and that for one for a lot and that. So, yeah, that's... It's going to be a busy... Yeah, busy next five days and that. going to be absolutely exhausted. I'm going to work on the next episode of our Rags to Witches Challenge. Because that is doing very well at the moment, actually. But yeah, more videos will be coming out, hopefully not just every four days, you know, twice a week maybe if I'm lucky. I want to try to get at least four videos out a week, but again, just real life in that. 
has its way in that. But yeah, that's just a very short ramble of an outro. Now, I thought, you know, just explain the situation now, and yeah, this is going to be a very long mod review, especially with that herbal tea now. Like, again, check out that herbal tea one because it is absolutely awesome. It is, you know, making, like, as we tested and showed in that, 5 mil a year easy on easy mode, or 3.5 mil on normal economy. Now, with the extra ones in there, you know, this, um, what's it? Bovine one in that, whatever. Get another mill too easy from all those combined in that. And yeah, with the herbal tea, you can expand on that. Absolute beautiful. But anyways, time to end the video here. But as always, hope you've liked this. <laughs> uh, you know, again, I know it's a come out. I do apologize, but it is what it is at the end of the day. I can't really do much about the past now. So focus on going forward. But anyways, hope you enjoyed this more review. If so, smash that button. Feel free to down below. If you want to share, so please be a guest. If you're not subscribed to the channel yet, please consider. But for you to do, hope you nice stay. But for now, it's me from Everwick Stream, and I'll see you all uh, very soon. <laughs>